are listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Gelt will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, money maven Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. We are talking with Leon Harris. Leon Harris is an Israeli certified public accountant, CPA, and also a UK chartered accountant. Leon heads Harris Consulting and Tax Limited, which specializes in international business and tax advice for companies, individuals, and trusts. He also heads Harris Consulting and Fiduciary Specialists, which is an Israeli accountancy firm. Formerly, Leon was a tax partner at Ernst & Young Israel and established its international tax department in 1994. He specializes in the area of oil and gas, high-tech, biotech, and trust and estate planning, and of course does a huge amount of work with Olim. And I have to tell you that he wrote the tax chapter in my book, Building Wealth in Israel, which is a book about financial planning and investing, and being that I am not a tax guy, I turned to him to teach about that in the book. So, Leon, I would like to welcome you to the show. <laughs> Listen, let me just get right into it. When we talk about Olim, who are basically our listeners, what are the main tax breaks for people who, immigrants to Israel, Olim? Well, Doug, there are some fantastic Israeli tax breaks now, which are attracting the interest of Olim from the United States, the UK, Canada, and elsewhere. We're talking about a 10-year tax holiday. That's a 10-year exemption from Israeli tax on all non-Israeli source income and capital gains. In addition, if you open a Patach deposit account with an Israeli bank, that's a three-month foreign currency deposit, then you get a 20-year exemption on the interest. And finally, there are some fairly well-known redu uh, reductions and exemptions from Israeli customs duty for example, on uh, cars, refrigerators, television sets, and so forth. So when someone comes to Israel, if he has his accounts in the U.S., like as you know, we manage accounts at Profile for our accounts, but the accounts themselves are held in the U.S., those specific accounts would enjoy the tax holiday? Oh, yes, because they are in the U.S., which is, of course, outside of Israel. And what if they were to bring the money to a local bank here in Israel and buy the same stocks and bonds that they would be buying in America? Uh, if they're buying Israeli stocks, then there's probably going to be Israeli tax. If they buy American stocks through your services, then there should be no Israeli tax. I see. So, okay, so if the money has to be held outside of Israel, what if they earn money in Israel and then send it back to the U.S.? If they earn money in Israel and uh, send the uh, income uh, back to the U.S., uh, that's, um, that will still be taxed in Israel. What's important is that you invest outside of Israel. I see. And the, it's the money that you had before you made Aliyah. Uh, not anymore. Under the new regime from uh, the beginning of 2007, you can bring money in after Aliyah, and you can uh, uh, in, sell earlier investments and reinvest after Aliyah and still get the 10-year exemption from Israeli tax. It really is very easy to get now. Okay, so when does someone become fiscally a resident of Israel? Under Israeli domestic tax law, you become fiscally resident in Israel when your center of living shifts to Israel. And that's based on your social, family, and economic circumstances, which is a little bit vague in practice. But the law gives us two assumptions of fiscal residency. One is that you're in Israel 183 days in a particular tax year. And the other is that you're in Israel 425 days over three tax years, any three tax years, including 30 days in the last of those three years. <laughs> but who's counting? Okay. <laughs> so if, if someone, uh, like I have a number of clients who are doctors, let's say in the U.S., they, they made Aliyah, they fly back a couple of, you know, a week or two a month, and then they come back to Israel. Can they claim that they still live, let's say, in New York? Uh, actually, they do and some do, and where things get interesting is where they are flying back to, the, to New York to work and they still have their living connections, but they leave a wife and kids living in Israel. 
There have been uh, court cases in Israel which say that even though the husband and wife love each other dearly, they can still be resident in different countries. Huh. So when we talk about someone becoming fiscally resident in Israel, which Olim specifically are eligible for that? Okay, with, for the 10-year tax holiday uh, that I just talked about, we're talking about Olim who arrived in Israel on their Aliyah as fiscal residents in, uh, uh, on or after January the 1st, 2007. If you arrived before that time, uh, then an, uh, uh, a different regime applies, which uh, gives you a 5- or 10-year exemption, but only on interest and uh, dividends, uh, pensions, and capital gains, on, on assets that you held before your Aliyah. Now, the new regime, the 10-year uh, tax holiday, applies also to returning residents. In other words, people who lived in Israel for a while or for good, then left Israel uh, to live abroad, and they are abroad either five or 10 years, depending on when they come back. If they come back this year, they need to have been abroad 10 years, and then they can still have the 10-year tax holiday that I just talked about. Well, so the purpose of this was to encourage people who left Israel to return? Absolutely. Uh, a lot of people who left Israel were high-tech engineers who went off to California or to Boston, and Israel would very much like them back. I gotcha. We are talking to Leon Harris, who is an Israeli certified public accountant. He's also a UK chartered accountant, and he heads uh, his own firm, Harris Consulting and Tax Limited, which specializes in international business and tax advice for companies and individuals and trusts. And as I mentioned earlier, Leon wrote the tax chapter in my book, Building Wealth in Israel, uh, the book which focuses on financial planning and investing, desperately needed information about taxes because that is always a critical component of any sort of investment plan. Uh, Leon, here at, uh, you know, as, as you know, on the radio, it's only my, my once a week job. My day job is that I'm an investment advisor. I, uh, I run profile investments. And so we deal a lot with people who have made Aliyah but want to keep their money in the States. So a question that comes up a lot um, when I deal with these clients is they want to know what's not covered by the 10-year exemption. All right. The, the main thing that is not covered under the new tax regime uh, is, the, is uh, the case of telecommuters. That's what we call it in our uh, jargon. A telecommuter is someone who makes Aliyah to Israel, and he is, for example, a software engineer or someone who works over the Internet, and he sits in Jerusalem or Tel Aviv, and he works from uh, Jerusalem or Tel Aviv with his old firm back in New York or Toronto or London or wherever it is. Now, the firm uh, that he's working for may be abroad, but because he is sitting in Israel and doing the work physically, uh, he's generating Israeli source income, and unfortunately that is taxable in Israel at regular rates from day one. No 10-year tax holiday for that kind of income, even though it's for a foreign firm. What about these people who say that they, before they left the old country, they set up a, a corporation there that's basically a shell corporation, and that company gets paid by someone overseas? And therefore, because that company existed before they made Aliyah, it's, it would get included in the 10-year exemption. Is that legitimate tax planning, or is that kind of a pipe dream? Uh, it's somewhere in between, Doug, uh, because uh, the work they actually do uh, in Israel generates Israeli source income, and that foreign company is technically taxable in Israel. It probably has what we call a permanent establishment, a fixed place of business, which is uh, that guy's place in Israel. However, if uh, after that uh, the company goes on to pay him dividends, uh, then uh, that uh, dividend income will not be taxed. So we can get a partial exemption on the dividend income. Okay. And this is all, we're still talking about the 10-year exemption. 10 years does seem like a very long time, but is it possible for someone to extend that period? Uh, sometimes it is possible to extend the 10 years. That, uh, there are various techniques for doing this, but for capital gains at the moment. Uh, there is discussion uh, at the Cabinet and in the Ministry of Immigration of extending the 10 years, uh, but that will probably be uh, under the proposals being formulated only for people who invest significant amounts in the Israeli economy. But for those who can't wait for that, we have some very special techniques for capital gains beyond the 10 years. That would need specialist individual advice, though. 
Okay. It sounds rather complicated, so maybe we could just take one minute then. If you could tell people, we have listeners both in Israel and overseas, how they could contact you if they have further uh, questions. Okay. My phone number in Israel is 972 for Israel, of course, 36123153. My cell phone, almost 24 hours, is 972-5464. Nine three nine eight, and my email address is leon at hcat dot co co. Okay, so listen, Leon. I would like to thank you once more. We have been talking with Leon Harris, who is an Israeli CPA and also a UK chartered accountant. But you do also work with people coming from other Anglo countries. Oh yes, very uh, much so. From Australia, from South Africa, from all over. Okay, and Leon has his own company, Harris Consulting and Tax Limited, which specializes in international business and tax advice, both for companies and individuals, and of course, uh, trusts as well. And uh, I'm once again proud to say that he wrote the tax chapter in my book, Building Wealth in Israel. Leon, I would like to thank you once again for joining us on the show. Thank you, Doug. Okay, have a great day. Thank you. Been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt show with Money Maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt show gives you up to date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.